So the month of July is a very important month for two reasons. First reason is, of course, we have new Nintendo Switch games coming out. Second reason is, it's my birthday month. Now, I don't want any gifts or anything like that, but if you want to buy some merch down below, feel free to do so. But of course, we have to talk about the new Nintendo Switch games that are coming out in the month of July because, I mean, that's why you're here. And honestly, it's a pretty solid month with some new games coming out. There's actually a lot of big AAA titles as well, so it's going to be a very fun month for Nintendo Switch owners. So without any further ado, if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video. But let's talk about the upcoming Nintendo Switch games for the month of July and what games you might want to end up picking up. Kicking things off on July 6th, we have Ease 9 Monstrum Knox coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, if you know anything about me, you would know that when it comes to action RPGs, Ease 8 is easily one of my favorite of all time, if not my favorite of all time. Now, once again, as with other games in the Ease series, you take control of Adol, Adol, I don't care how you say it, but I say Adol. Now, similar to Ease 8's gameplay, you once again control multiple characters at once, each with their own playstyle and different strengths. There's also new abilities for the first time in the franchise called Monstrum Gifts that change your traversal and allow you to run up walls, glide, and more. Now, honestly, I haven't been paying much attention to the story of this game as I really liked Ease 8's story and I didn't want to spoil myself, but I do know that Ease 9 Monstrum Knox will be a day one purchase for me because I just absolutely love this franchise. Like I said, Ease 9 Monstrum Knox comes out on July 6th on your Nintendo Switch, and if you're a fan of action RPGs, this should be very high on your list. Also coming out on July 6th, we have A Plague Tale Innocence coming to the Nintendo Switch Cloud. Now, we recently talked about how the sequel to this game, A Plague Tale Requiem, is coming to the Nintendo Switch in 2022 alongside of the other versions of the game. But now it does seem like the original game is getting a cloud release on June 6th for your Nintendo Switch. I recently started playing this game on the Xbox Series X like a month or so ago, and honestly, I really enjoyed it, as the game is essentially a stealth game in which a group of people are trying to kill you and your brother, as they think your brother is the cause of a plague that has invaded a village and surrounding areas. There's a bunch of different styles in this game. There's puzzle elements, some horror elements, and honestly, it's just a really fun game overall. I'll be very interested to see how the cloud version of this game ends up on the Nintendo Switch in terms of both performance and sales, but it does seem like more cloud games are coming to the Switch, and A Plague Tale Innocence is the latest one on July 6th. Now before we get into the next game on our list, I want to give a huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. What is Surfshark VPN? I'm glad you asked. I've said it before and I'll say it again, RGT wants you to be protected when you're surfing the internet, and Surfshark VPN was kind enough to sponsor today's video and they will give you that protection. Surfshark VPN is a fast and easy to use VPN service that you can use on a variety of devices. I have it on my PC right here, I simply just click a button and bam, now I'm protected online. Aside from just protecting your data online, Surfshark VPN also allows you to access things like Netflix and Hulu from other regions to get more content, plus tons more of additional features. And right now, by using the link in the description box down below in the code RGT, you can get Surfshark VPN at an 83% discount, which is the cheapest you can get it anywhere. Plus, you get three extra months for free. One membership allows you to hook up all your devices to your account, whether it's a cell phone, a desktop, a laptop, or even your Xbox or PlayStation console. So protect yourself with Surfshark VPN. Check out the link in the description box down below, and huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. On July 9th, we have one of the biggest games coming to the Nintendo Switch, and that is Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. Now, honestly, it's pretty impressive that this game is even being made considering just how bad the Nintendo 3DS game flopped, but Monster Hunter Stories 2 should fare much better on the Nintendo Switch. Now, if you're expecting a traditional Monster Hunter style game, you know, kind of like Rise, you shouldn't really expect that at all. Instead, think of Monster Hunter Stories as more of a Pokemon style game, in which you collect various monsters in your adventure and have to fight them against other monsters in a turn-based style. I think the art style of this game looks really good, it looks a lot like a Japanese comic book sort of come to life for me, and the crossover stuff with Monster Hunter Rise is pretty cool too. There's actually going to be a free demo of Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin that goes up on the Nintendo Switch on June 25th, and all of your data from that will transfer over to the full version of the game, so depending on when you're watching this video, that demo may already be available. If you're very curious about this game, I definitely recommend checking out the demo, and I think Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin is going to be a big hit when it hits the Nintendo Switch on July 9th. On July 16th, we have the most controversial Legend of Zelda game of all time besides, well, maybe Zelda 2, and that, of course, is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. 
Now, yes, visual improvements were done to this game, and yes, they did change the control scheme of this game as well to be allowed to be played with just button controls instead of having to use mandatory motion controls like the original Wii game did. Now, as far as new content in the game is concerned, the only thing we really know about so far is the ability to teleport to the sky at any point in time within the game, pending you have the Skyloft Amiibo that, of course, is $25. Now, Nintendo did say that there are some other quality of life improvements that were done to the game, but haven't detailed them yet, so it'll be interesting to see what those are. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword is actually the only mainline Legend of Zelda game that I have never completed, and I will be picking it up on the Nintendo Switch because I want to play this game with a more traditional and proper control scheme. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what story elements I missed out from this game on the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD when it comes out on the Nintendo Switch on July 16th. On July 20th, Chris Tales is hitting the Nintendo Switch, and honestly, this is one of the more interesting JRPGs that's come out in a while. Chris Tales introduces some interesting gameplay mechanics to make it sort of stand out from other JRPGs that we've seen over the past 30 plus years. Now, while it is a turn-based RPG, you have the ability to jump time, both on the map and in battle, and this will actually end up affecting the gameplay as well. When you're in battle, Chris Bell, the lead character of the game, can summon crystal powers to send enemies to the past or the future, alterating their characteristics, in which then you can take advantage of these altered states. It looks like an interesting enough game, I like the art style of it, so it might be worth checking out. Chris Tales hits the Nintendo Switch on July 20th. On July 22nd, we have a game coming to the Nintendo Switch called Last Stop, and I'll be honest with you guys, I have no idea what the gameplay is like in this game. I'm going to assume it's kind of like an adventure game in which you walk around, solve puzzles, maybe some mini games, talk to people, but really I can't even say that based on the two trailers of this game that I've watched. What I can say is that Last Stop kind of has my interest in terms of the story, as you evidently play as three different characters who have some supernatural stuff happening in modern day London, and there's like some weird shirtless dude who kind of looks a bit alien with like glowing eyes, I really don't know what the hell is going on. But something about that intrigues me, and the art style of this game kind of reminds me of the Back to the Future Telltale game, which I enjoyed. Last stop hits the Nintendo Switch on July 22nd, I have no idea what the hell it is, but I might end up checking it out. On July 27th, Neo The World Ends With You hits the Nintendo Switch. Now, this of course is a sequel to the cult classic on the Nintendo 3DS, which is then ported over to the Nintendo Switch. Neo The World Ends With You has one major departure from the original game that I guess you could call like a budget increase, with the shift from 2D graphics of the original to 3D graphics now. Now if you remember anything about the port of the first game, which was actually based on the mobile game to the Nintendo Switch, it was the crippling controls, which literally were hell for your hands, so I hope they've done enough to fix that aspect of the game to make it more easily controllable. The game takes place in a stylized modern Tokyo in which high school student Rindo becomes involved in the New Reapers game. The game takes place in a stylized modern Tokyo in which high school student Rindo becomes involved in the Reapers game, in which he and his game named the Wicked Twisters must battle other games across the course of a week for their survival within this world. Now it's an interesting game, it's definitely sort of a departure from traditional JRPGs with more modern elements, and I think Neo The World Ends With You will find a good home on the Nintendo Switch when it hits on July 27th. Also on July 27th, Great Ace Attorney Chronicles ends up hitting the Nintendo Switch, and look, Capcom talked about this game enough during their E3, they showed off like 10 minutes of gameplay, you've seen enough of this game, you know what this game is about, if you like Phoenix Wright, buy Ace Attorney Chronicles, if you don't like Phoenix Wright, you'll probably want to skip this game. Also on July 27th, we have Samurai Warriors 5 hitting the Nintendo Switch. Now, this of course is a hack and slash adventure game, and the Samurai Warrior franchise continues with Samurai Warriors 5 being the latest game in the franchise. Now, one of the main things that this game is offering is a brand new visual style that looks more so like a painting, a new story taking place in feudal Japan, and a new hyper attack, which will allow you to traverse great distance while attacking the enemies in the game. Now I love the Hyrule Warriors games, but I think that's because I care more so about the cast of characters within the Hyrule universe, so sometimes it can be harder to get into these games. But maybe Samurai Warriors 5 will be able to break the mold when it hits the Nintendo Switch on July 27th. And finally, on July 28th, we have a game called The Forgotten City coming out. Now, what started out originally as a Skyrim mod that was downloaded over 3 million times is now getting a full-on game called The Forgotten City, and honestly, the premise sounds pretty interesting. 
In this game, players are trapped in a time loop in an ancient city hidden up beneath the Roman Empire. There's 26 residents who live under strict and lethal law. If any of them break the mysterious golden rule, they all die. Now you play as a person from the modern era and you basically use time travel and interrogation to change the course of events and solve the puzzle of the golden rule. It's a non-linear game, it takes about 6-8 to eight hours of run through but there are multiple endings, there's voice acting and an original orchestral score as well. This game really caught my interest, I think it looks really cool, I never played the mod in Skyrim but it seems like it was pretty popular, so I think the Forgotten City might end up being a bit of a hidden gem when it hits the Nintendo Switch on July 28th. So a pretty interesting month for the Nintendo Switch, you got some big budget games like of course Skyward Sword HD, Monster Hunter Stories 2, you got some smaller games like Last Stop which I have no idea what's going on in that game, you got some middle of the road games like Chris Tale, overall a very solid month for the Nintendo Switch in the month of July. So let me know in the comments section down below what games you plan on picking up and as always guys thank you for checking out this video, if you are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button, be sure to like the video, share it around if you enjoyed it and a huge thank you to Surfshark vpn for sponsoring this video check out the link in the description box down below for more information and as always i'll catch you guys on the next video later